Hello everyone, myself Dr. Smrita Jain from Muradabad Institute of Technology, Muradabad. Today in this lecture, we are going to talk about the strategic decision making and the levels of strategy. So, before starting up with the lecture, we are going to study what are the learning objective of this particular lecture. So, in this lecture, we are going to cover the strategic decision making, the issues and the modes of strategic decision making, the process of strategic decision making and also the various levels of strategy. So, starting up with the first slide. Well, what is strategic decision making? Strategy decision making is what? Decision making, if you are going to talk about in general sense, then what is decision making is all about? Decision making is basically selection of the best possible alternative among various available alternatives. So, if you are going to have an option, you are going to have a choice, then you are going to select the best possible alternative that a decision making is all about. Suppose, you are going to have food, you are going for a restaurant, you are going to have food in a restaurant, then finally, what is going to happen? You, are, you can have a variety of options in terms of restaurant. You can go restaurant A, B, C or D. So, the best restaurant that you are going to choose that is going to be a decision making. So, decision making is all about selection of the best possible alternative among various available alternative. And what are strategic decision making? A strategic decision making is basically a decision making, but if it is going to add three characteristics, then it will become a strategic decision making. And what are three characteristics? That is rare, consequential and directive. What are rare is all about? Rare is something unique. If your decision is of repetitive nature, it is of daily uh, kind of activity, then it is not a strategic decision making. A strategy decision making is only to be made when you are going to have a rare situation, a specific situation. So, for day to day activity, decision making is there, but not a strategic decision making. The second characteristic is, is consequential. It means there must be objective and that there must be commitment from all the levels of the management. And the third one is directive. There must be a direction so that we can easily achieve the objective. So, strategic decision making is basically a decision making and what kind of decision making? These are the decisions that are made according to a company's goals or missions and relates to the responsibility of the senior management. Getting my point? What are decision making and what are strategic decision making? Strategic decision making are basically the decisions that are made according to the company's goals or missions and relates to the responsibility of the senior management. These are the key points of strategic decision making. See, decisions that we are going to make on the basis of the company's goals, objectives or the mission and that too, what kind of level of management these decisions are going to make? Obviously, senior management is going to make the strategic decision. So, strategic decision making are the decisions that are being made according to the mission, vision, goals and objective of the organization and it is the responsibility of the senior management that they are going to make such decisions. An example we can quote, number one example for strategy decision making is what? It is to enter into a new market. What does it mean to enter into a new market? For example, you are suppose currently in a business of textile or suppose you are in a business of FMCG product and if you want to move in another kind of market, you can go for the hotel industry or you can move towards the shipping, you can move towards any other area of diversification or expansion or one on the other side we can talk if you are going to enter into a new market, suppose right now you are dealing in the uh, products of the youngster or the kids and now you are dealing in the product of the adults, teenagers, then also your target is going to be different. So, in that way strategy decision is making is what? If you are going to cover the new market in any way, if you are going for the diversification from one product line to the other product line, related diversification to the unrelated diversification, then also you require strategic decision making. Related diversification means the products that we are dealing with that are related to each other. Suppose we are, suppose we have to purchase the uh, cloth or we are we have to purchase clothing, then in that case clothing is there, then we are also dealing in accessories, then we are also dealing in footwear. So, these are similar or related kind of product. 
So, that is known as related diversification and unrelated uh, diversification is what? It is just like we are moving from one product to the other and that has no similarity. Shipping to hotel, hotel to FMCG. So, this is the diversification related and unrelated. So, if you want to move into a new market in that sense you require a proper decision making because it is a very complex decision that senior management has to take in which kind of what kind of uh, product they are going to uh, deal upon or in what kind of market they are going to enter. So, that is the very important question very important task very complex task that has to be taken care with the help of the strategic decision making. Then to start up a new product line obviously, when you are going to involve yourself in one product or the other product or you are going to start up with a new product line then also you require a strategic decision making. Then if you are going to use or you are going to add upon a new technology in the organization then also you require a strategic decision making because you are going to have ample of choices you are going to have two or three or four technologies and out of these the best technology you are going to choose that is going to be a strategic decision making. Then to make major changes in policies if you are going to make modifications in your guidelines in your policies then also you require strategic decision making and if you are going to make changes in the corporate structure the structure of the organization then also you require strategic decision making. So, strategic decision making is basically what these are the decisions complex decisions very crucial decisions for the organization that are being made according to the consideration of vision mission objectives and goals and that is the responsibility of the senior management to take such decisions because these decisions are related with the strategy and if these decisions are not going to be correct obviously your strategy is going to be wrong and you cannot achieve your objective anyhow and if you are not going to achieve your objective you cannot achieve your mission you cannot achieve your vision. So, the first step is you are going to take the best decision out of various decision. So, this is our strategic decision making is all about that you are going to take a tough decision complex decision that is related with your business and that is the responsibility of the senior management that they are going for the research they are going for lots of work. So, that they are going to take a best possible decision for the benefit of the organization. So, that they can achieve the success in the longer period of a time. Okay. In this second slide we can see various issues in strategic decision making these things you are going to keep in mind while framing up the decision making. See number one is there criteria for the decision making when you are going to take the decision when you are going to make up the strategic decision. So, number one criteria is going to be the objective setting for decision making what you require you require a kind of objective. If you do not have objective then what is the use of decision why you are making a decision you are making a decision because you are having an objective to achieve. So, objective is the main criteria for the decision making without objective decision making is not going to be happen or it will not suffice the purpose. So, there must be a objective that is the main criteria of the decision making and concept of maximization in the objective setting when we are going to take objective as a criteria for the decision making then the first thing that we are going to consider that is the concept of maximization whatever objective we are going to have that is going to maximize your return that is going to maximize your profitability that is going to ensure your profitability for a longer period of a time then only the objective is going to serve the purpose. So, the main element is there must be a concept of maximization maximizing your returns your profitability. Then in the second element we can study concept of satisfying it is going to satisfy it should satisfy the needs of the stakeholders or the top management whatever or the senior management because they are framing the strategic decision they are taking the strategic decision. So, that must meet out the criteria of the people that must satisfy the conditions of the senior management and the third one is concept of incrementalism incrementalism is what it means taking a small small step taking incremental steps slowly you are going to achieve your objective. 
so strategic decision making should be like that that you are on a way to achieve your objective but that too in a small small step in a very incremental steps in a slow step so easily you can achieve your objective obviously if you are going to jump then you are going to leave various things in between and you are not going to achieve your objective in a uh, possible manner or a best feasible manner so it is very important that we are going to consider three of the things while setting the criteria for the decision making what is the main criteria of decision making objective and what are the three things that we are going to keep in mind that is the number one concept of maximization of the profit or the revenue there must be satisfaction and there must be finally the concept of incrementalism it means there must be incremental or slow movement step by step movement for the achievement of the objective okay second issue is the rationality in decision making rationality in decision making rational is what something practically possible logical that's what our rationality is all about right so rationality in decision making means achievement of objective in the best possible manner whatever objective we are going to set in the first step what we have done criteria for the decision making we are going to set the objective on the basis of three factors second the objective must be achieved in a best possible manner it's not like suppose our target is that we are going to earn revenue 10% uh, revenue 10% profit and in terms of objective we are going to talk about the objective that we have achieved the uh, already cost that we have incurred is 5% in terms of profit so finally how much profit we are going to have only 5% so rationality is, is possible only when objective is going to be achieved in a best possible manner in terms of there not much cost is going to be in, uh, incurred in terms of achievement of objective then creativity in the decision making when you are going to take the decision there must be creativity there must be innovation there must be something new add on feature is there if you are going to take decision and that to routine decision that is repetitive in nature that is just like that every day you are going to take the decision so that is of no use A strategic decision is uh, making is what it is like rarity rare decision unique decision so when you are going to take the strategic decision you are going to make the strategic decision what thing that you are going to keep in mind that is the innovation creativity something new originality is also there so these are the things that we are going to keep in mind in terms of this issue of creativity in decision making right then next variability in decision making variability in decision making is what variable variable is what for any problem or any kind of decision there are various kind of people that are being involved and their thinking is different from the other person so if you are going to figure out different decision makers may arrive at a different conclusion situation is one and various people are there they are sitting they are going to take the decision and their conclusion is going to be different because their thinking is going to be different so there is a variability in the decision making because different decision makers may arrive at a different conclusion so the best conclusion that we are going to consider that is the most important that which is the best possible alternative which is the best possible option that we are going to consider in terms of the variability in decision making then person related factors in the decision making person related factors in the decision making it means that on the basis of the education intellectual risk taking capacity personality these are the main element that we are going to consider that is going to affect the decision making of the individual so if the person is going to take the decision so these thing he keep in mind that according to his risk taking capacity he has to take the decision or he will take the decision according to his education his liking his intellectual level he takes the decision so such factors also affect the decision making so that thing we are going to keep in mind while taking the decision that such factors should not affect the decision making process and the fifth one is individual versus group decision making individual versus group decision making what does it mean it means when the individual is going to take any of the decision or individual is making a decision and a group of people are making a decision obviously the decision is going to be different when the board of directors is taking a decision and one ceo is taking a decision obviously the there is a difference in decision making so this again is going to be a issue in decision making when go, we are going to think about making a decision so these are basically issues 
that we are going to think or consider while taking the strategic decision making. So, there must be objective, the objective must be achieved in the best possible manner, then there must be creativity in decision making, there must be something new, originality must be there. Different decision makers are going to arrive at a different conclusion. So, this thing also we have to keep in mind that this is the best one. Then obviously, the person or the personal factor is going to play a major role and that is going to affect the decision. And finally, when individual is going to take the decision and the group of people is going to take the decision, again it is going to affect the decision. So, these things we always have to keep in mind while taking the decision and these factors will affect the decision automatically. So, these are the issues that is related with the strategic decision making. Okay. Now, moving towards the, this slide, these are the modes of strategic decision making, Meansburg has given these modes of strategic decision making, these are the main modes, entrepreneurial mode, adaptive mode and the planning mode. Entrepreneurial mode is what? Entrepreneurial mode is like when you are looking for an opportunity, there is a proactive search for the opportunity. Proactive is what? Proactive is just like problem has still not arrived, but still you have solution for the problem. Getting my point? It means you are having a solution before the problem arrives. So, entrepreneurial mode is going to focus on the proactive search for the new opportunity. It is going to help the businessman or the entrepreneur that it will give you opportunity from the market and you are going to grab it and you can start up with your own business. So, on the basis of that opportunity, you are going to take the decision. Here, the power is centralized. Centralized, it means power lies in one hand because there is only one businessman, one head that is thinking. So, power lies in only one hand and power is centralized. And if power is centralized, obviously decision making is going to be good, is decision making is going to be quick and the person is going to take the decision in a most efficient manner. Okay. Then adaptive mode, adaptive mode is what? That is somehow opposite of the entrepreneurial mode. Here you are looking for the proactive search for new opportunities and here reactive solution to the existing problems. Adaptive mode is what? When problem arise and we got to know about the problem, then we are looking for the solution. So, that is a reactive mode in this the problem is here, we can see the problem and then we are looking for the solution. So, decisions are basically on the priority, if two or three problems are there, then we are looking for the which problem we have to solve first. So, these are the priority based decision. So, we can take the example of entrepreneurial mode like Infosys example is there, we can take the examples of Reliance Group. So, these are the businessmen, they have started up with their own venture and they are reaching the sky. In the adaptive mode, we can take the large organization, government, large, large universities that we can consider and in planning mode, what a planning mode is all about? Planning mode is just like a combination of both of the terms, entrepreneurial mode as well as the adaptive mode, it is based on the situation analysis. Situation analysis is what? According to this uh, situation, you are going to take the decision. So, mostly the MNCs and big corporate houses, they believe in this particular mode that is the planning mode. Planning mode is what? You are going to take the decision according to the situation. If opportunity is there, obviously you can grab the opportunity and if problem is there, then you are going to make the solution of that particular problem. So, these are the three important modes of decision making, means per modes of decision making. Entrepreneurial mode, totally dependent on the centralized decision making, adaptive mode, reactive solution to the problem in planning, it is a combination of both of the term and it is based on the situation analysis. You are going to select the best strategy, so you can achieve the objective. So, here comes with the strategic decision making process. What is strategic decision making? What we can do? We are starting up with the first step, we are going to evaluate where we are standing, what is our current performance and what is our current performance? It may be in terms of profitability, return on investment, whether we are going to achieve our mission, objectives and goals. So, this is the current performance that we should look after. In the first step, what we are looking for? We are looking for what is our current situation, what is our current performance, where we are standing, whether we are able to achieve our 
objectives and the mission whether we are going to achieve the profitability we can have the return on investment these things we are going to consider in the first step where we are standing that is the first step in the strategic decision making second review corporate governance in the second step we are going to review the performance of the top management performance of the top management means that you are going to review the performance of the top management the people that are sitting on the top it may be your ceo it may be your board of directors you are going to look after their policies their philosophy and all then in this step you are going to scan and assess the external environment external environment is what your outside environment that is consisting of political situation technological condition your social condition cultural condition so everything we are going to scan and then we can easily figure out the opportunities and threats that is having in the environment then in this next step we have to scan the internal corporate environment in this we are going to analyze our strength and weaknesses marketing department is there finance department is there hr department is there it department is there production is there and we are going to figure out what kind of strength and weakness they are having if resources are not there obviously that is going to be a weakness for the organization so we are going to remove that barrier then only we can neutralize our weaknesses and we can increase our strength then on the basis of scanning of internal and external environment we are going to analyze swot factors swot factor is what strength weakness opportunities and threats then on the basis of the swot factors we are going to select the best possible strategy we are going to implement the strategy and we are going to evaluate the strategy whether it is working according to the objective or not so that is a process of the decision making starting from the top, uh, current performance to the final evaluation of the strategy that is strategy we can easily evaluate with the help of the feedback and the control mechanism okay so here comes the levels of strategy when we are going to talk about the levels of strategy there are three kinds of levels of strategy corporate level business level and the functional level what a corporate strategy is all about corporate level strategy is basically a strategy that a corporate creates or perform for whole of the organization so it is going to be consisting of all the strategic business unit suppose tata group is there and tata group is going to have tata steel uh, tata steel is there tcs is there okay so in that case all the units that the tata is going to have the strategy is being applicable in whole of the organization tanishk is there so when the strategy is being applied on all the strategic business unit then it is known as corporate level strategy business level strategy is what when it is going to be formulated for a specific strategy that to on a single business unit or that to on a single product line if suppose tata group is having a strategy in terms of only tata motors then it is known as business level strategy if the organization or the tata group is going to have the strategy tata motors tata steel tanish tcs so this is going to be the corporate level strategy because this strategy is going to be implemented on all the spus when it is going to be implemented on a single business unit it may be tanish it may be your tata motors it may be tata steel then it is going to be a business level strategy and what is the functional level strategy when it is going to be formulated on the department of the business unit and what are the department functional department functional department are what they are like marketing hr finance it production logistics and all so that is the main difference corporate level strategy is basically going to be affected all the spus business level strategy is going to be affected a single line of business or the product line and finally the functional level strategy it is being formulated on a functional department so this is a different level of strategy that we can easily figure out this is your corporate office and corporate level strategy is being implemented from here on all the spus then finally this is your business level these are your business level as we were taking the example of tata group so tata group is there if tata group is going to implement this strategy in on all the units then it is going to be the corporate level strategy if tata group is going to implement this strategy on only on tata motors then it is going to be a business level strategy and if tata motors is going to have this strategy on its functional department then it is going to be a functional level strategy so these are the levels of strategy as we have discussed in corporate level strategy we study expansion stability and retrenchment expansion strategy is what when we are going for the expansion expansion is what when we are going for the diversification we are want to expand our product line 
we want to increase the products in the market we are going for the diversification in related or unrelated product line stability is what when we don't want to make any kind of changes in the organization we have to stop there we are going to like the environment is not at all stable for you then you can wait for a certain period of a time then you can proceed further so stability strategy is there that you can wait till the environment becomes favorable for you retrenchment strategy is what when you are going to cut down one line of business or your some of the activities because you think profitability is not there in that particular unit business level strategy is what business level strategy is cost leadership when you are going to target the market that is broad you are going to offer lower cost product there then in the second one differentiation is there in this category you are going to provide differentiated product to your customer and in the third one focus strategy is there in this you can adopt either lower cost product or differentiation strategy but you are going to target a narrow group it may be your niche segment it may be your narrow segment you are focusing on a particular group of people and finally functional level strategy is there in functional level strategy marketing hr finance and production department is there so in such a strategy you are going to study corporate level strategy business level strategy and the functional level strategy so corporate level strategy is all about your expansion your stability and the retrenchment in expansion you will grow your business then in stability you are going to be stabilized you have to wait till the environment is becoming favorable for you in retrenchment you are going to cut down some of the units or some of the product line so environment is going to be profitable for you and the business is going to be profitable for you in this you are going to target the broad category of people by providing lower cost product in this you are going to provide differentiated product new, new innovative product and that differentiation means when you are going to have that product that is something different and that your competitors does not have and in the uh, last one focus is there you are going to focus on a narrow group of market and finally your functional level strategy is there marketing hr finance and production so these are the levels of strategy that we are going to keep in mind while studying the strategic management so if you are going to talk about the strategic decision making strategy decision making is what when we study the decision making and the best possible alternative that we choose and that should be according to the mission and goals of the organization that's a strategic decision making is all about when we are going to talk about the levels of strategy then there are three kinds of level that we have to keep in mind business level strategy before that corporate level strategy is there and then finally your functional level strategy is there so decision making is going to be a very important element of strategy because without the proper uses of decision making your strategy can't be implemented decision making is very important aspect of the organization because if you are going to talk about the people who are working for the organization they have to achieve their objective so if you are going to talk about in nutshell what are these concept tells these concept are going to lead you towards the achievement of the objective achievement of the objective can be possible only when you are going to achieve your strategy achieving of a strategy means when you are going to have a good decision making thank you all for your patience listening